Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 45. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We do this video on the first of every month. I'm actually recording this video on March 28th. So it's going to be a little bit different this year. I'm going to be out of town, and so I won't actually be able to make it on the actual first of the month. And so I'll just release it in a few days. Um, I'll schedule to have it released uh, so that at least there's some video um, while I'm gone. But anyways, total market cap of crypto, at least as of March 28th, is $2.66 trillion. With the fair value logarithmic aggression trend line coming in at 2.462 trillion, this represents an overvaluation of approximately 8%. Now, we have followed this for a long time, and we've said previously that the general idea is going through undervaluation phases and overvaluation phases. Now, not all undervaluation phases and overvaluation phases are the same. There are more durable periods where we are undervalued and more durable periods where we were overvalued. There, were a, there was a period in 2019 where we went overvalued for a few months and then came back down to the undervaluation territory until the end of the halving year. In 2012, we went overvalued and then we actually came back down until the end or at least until the, the beginning of the post halving year. So. Currently, we are slightly overvalued. Now, when we talk about overvalued, that doesn't mean you know that the market has to immediately drop to the fair value. As you can see, we can spend months, if not years, in the overvaluation territory. So it's important to recognize that you go from undervaluation to overvaluation, and the general idea is to scale in at undervaluation and to scale out at overvaluation understanding that undervaluation and overvaluation can take years to ultimately play out. Now, currently, we have just gone above the fair value logger in the regression trend line. The last time we did that was late 2020. And you can see that we had a more durable overvaluation period. The time before that was just before, you know, in February 2020, we had a, a pretty bad crash after that. And the time before that was November, or sorry, April of 2019, where it stayed overvalued uh, basically until the end of the year, right? Until about Q4 or so of that year. So definitely uh, different times um, in the cryptoverse will, will sort of lead to more durable moves above the overvaluation, uh, above the fair value logger than the progression trend line. And other periods only get you slightly above it. Either way, I think it makes sense to have a plan. And I just wanted to sort of present that, hey, we are now technically overvalued. Um, after being undervalued essentially since um, June of 2022, right? Undervaluation starting June of 2022, and now we find ourselves back to being overvalued. What's interesting, and we talked about this before, is that there has been a large rotation of capital um, into Bitcoin and away from the altcoin market. Alts are still doing okay on their USD pairs, but a lot of that capital has gone into Bitcoin, and you can find evidence for that in the, re in the reality that Bitcoin is currently sitting in new highs, uh, well, it is while I'm making this video. Maybe by the time that um, this video comes out, the, the price of Bitcoin will be different. Right now, it's at, at around 70K, 70.5K. Just sort of pull it up, 70.5K. Uh, by the time you watch this video, of course, it, it could be different. It could be lower. It could be higher. I don't know. Um, but while Bitcoin is at a new high, a lot of altcoins are not, right? I and mean, we know that Ethereum is not. And basically, most of the top 10, if not, I mean, if not, basically all of them, um, I'm not sure if there's one, but I mean, a lot of them are, are just not at highs and a lot of them are even nowhere close to being at highs. And that's kind of why we focused so much and we'll continue to focus on, on the dominance of Bitcoin and why it makes sense, you know, through, you know, during QT and, and, and rate hikes, uh, late rate, high, late, late rate, late rate hiking cycle to be heavy Bitcoin as opposed to, um, heavy ETH or something like that. And then after rate cuts occur, then some of those higher risk stuff can then start to, to catch back up. But we haven't reached that stage yet. I mean, I know it's a long wait, and I, I know a lot of people keep front running the theoretical alt season that they want, but the reality is that you know Bitcoin continues to take more and more market share as the Bitcoin dominance goes higher. 
and as we've gone from being undervalued to being overvalued, okay? And again, sometimes I just look at the chart and just kind of stare at it and say, you know what? We can overcomplicate things by looking at the nitty gritty details. And, you know, we sort of do that. We really look at what's happening on the lower time frames a lot. But at the end of the day, you know, for everyone's sanity, just sometimes take a step back and look at the general market trend. There are going to be good times in the future. There are going to be bad times in the future. The general market trend is up over a long enough period of time. You can have some pretty scary phases. March 2020, basically all of 2022, a lot of 2018, a lot of 2014, right? I mean, even, even in, in late 2015, we had another scare, right? So, I mean, those phases can, of course, happen. And when they do, just remember the general market trend, right? Go back to that. And, you know, I tried to couple this with sort of dominance and, and, and Bitcoin dominance and, and monetary theory or monetary policy and, and, and just kind of trying to understand which cryptocurrencies are going to outperform. And through a lot of these prior phases, right, this whole bull market right here in 2019, Bitcoin dominance went up and I went well into overvaluation territory. Um, and guess what? During this whole rally, Bitcoin dominance has mostly gone up, right? And again, during a late rate hiking cycle, uh, very, very familiar, in fact. So again, this is a more general view. If you take the percent difference from the market cap and the fair value log on the progression trend line, you get something that looks like this. Um, so you can see we've gone again above the fair value. And the last time that occurred, uh, I mean, you can see the different times it occurred, and sometimes we go overvalued for a long time, and then other times it is much more shorter lived. And so, you know, whether it's going to be shorter lived or not, I think will ultimately depend on the reaction of Bitcoin as we go into rate cuts, right? There have been a lot of instances where Bitcoin finds a local top in April. That doesn't mean that it has to this time. In 2019, in fact, it rallied until June, right? And we know the first rate cut might not occur until June. Maybe it'll even get pushed out further than that, or maybe it'll be May. But a lot of times there's reason to think that the market could cool off and sort of after the halving, you can see it cooled off after the or after April in 2013, it cooled off after April in 2021, and even last year. You know, we did sweep the high in June, but it still more or less cooled off with the exception of that one week where we rallied back up. It was still a, fair, a fairly boring summer, and in, and not until Q4 arrived did the market get back into gear. Same thing in 2013. It wasn't until Q4 arrived really that the market really got back into gear. So you know whether it is a brief overvaluation period or not, I think is going to be dependent on on what Bitcoin does going into those rate cuts. Because you know last cycle we saw it, we saw Bitcoin fade into rate cuts. Um, I mean, you can see that fairly clearly right here. As the rate cuts arrived, we saw Bitcoin sort of fade into it. And if that repeats itself, then you could get a shorter period of overvaluation, kind of like 2019 or you know late 2011 or even February 2020. And then you go back to being undervalued and then you get a, then another move later on, right? We've seen that happen a lot. Counterpoint though, in 2017, once we went overvalued, we didn't really look back for another six months. So definitely a lot of things to consider, but that is you know, what the chart looks like right now. Technically slightly overvalued based on the data that's fit to all data, right? The, 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 the log and the regression trend line is fit to all data. Um, so it's not what I think, it's just, hey, this is the fit to all data and currently we are slightly above it. Business as usual, right? Nothing has changed. So those are the general, you know, that's the general trend here of the cryptoverse. And of course, I mean, I've said before, I think the ultimate, um, the ultimate goal is, is 10 trillion, uh, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.